listening to the voices behind Women's Cricket Chat. That's Alex, Hannah, Georgie and Cassie. Coming up on today's podcast, have we got a treat for you. It is the wonderful Alice Davidson Richards. When Alice isn't, you know, being a meme, being plastered all over social media, yes, we do talk about that in this week's episode. She's winning trophies with the South East Stars. And when she's not playing cricket... We get to know the ins and outs of Alice Davidson Richards and what it means to be a style icon. Welcome, Alice Davidson Richards, to Women's Cricket Chat. Feels like it's been a long time coming. I feel like you've been on our radar for a while. We've managed to pin you down. So, you know, we've caught you between theatres, training, thinking about walking netball and all the fun things that you get up to in your life and obviously the dogs. So... Kent player, South East Stars, Northern Supercharger. Welcome to the pod. How are things at your end? Thanks for having me. They're not too shabby. Been enjoying the nice sunny weather. As you said, there's trips, dog walks, training, watching, walking netball, you know, the usual things. Life's pretty dull at the moment, but I'm very content. And so you're in pre-season with the South East Stars at the moment. How is all that going? How's the fitness testing? We ignore that bit, but that might be out of the way hopefully by now and you can think about quickly. yeah fitness testing's done so the last these stars mixed up a little bit this year so you could either do it or they wanted you to do it right after the season so you didn't have to worry about it when you came up but unfortunately or fortunately I was commentating on the Hey Ho Flint final so I missed the day of testing so I had to do it after a month off which was really fun as every person that plays sports knows fitness testing is the highlight of their year but my mindset going into it is is what it is like you'll either do great you'll either do better you either do rubbish and you go from there but yeah training's been good we've just been playing games and starting to ramp things up a bit but the highlight is always the like volleyball or our head coach Jan Maibos made this up this game called Riverball which is basically volleyball but with an area in the middle which we're not allowed to go into yeah it's always the highlight of training is the games the highlight of cricket training is when you're not doing cricket. Yes. Yeah, no, that's okay. And also, <laughs> if you're badly in fitness testing, then you actually, it's really easy to improve. Exactly. You set the bar low, you can only get better. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the games are definitely a highlight. I mean, I love cricket, but we play it all the time. So when you get a chance to play something else for 10, 15 minutes, then I find it the like most fun bit sometimes, most of the time. And uh, you just mentioned previously that you were commentating on the Hey Ho Flint trophy. What were your thoughts on commentary in general? And did you enjoy it? And how did it all come about? I really enjoyed it. I wasn't really expecting it. As I said, I was expecting to be running up and down a hall in um, Beckenham doing fitness testing instead. But there have been so many female commentators over summer with 100 doing really well. And I thought, it would have been quite a nice avenue to go into. In games, I basically commentate to myself. So I'm never that quiet during a game. I'm usually just talking about what's happening or I say if it's a shot or I say if they messed it up, I'll like, be saying all of that to myself anyway. It's usually some of my teammates just start laughing at me because they can hear it as a ball goes up. I'm talking to myself. But Hen, the England communications person, contacted me a couple of days before and they said, this is an opportunity. Do you want to have a go? So I thought why the hell not see what happens it can either go really well or it can go badly you'll either really enjoy it or you won't so just see what happens so did it and really enjoyed it I thought it was great and I love that you basically commentate your own games anyway so then you're like I might as well do this as a job now <laughs> if we could you know like we've got a helmet cam if we could go back to the days when they've got the microphones we could just have you just giving us a rundown of what's going on There'll be some good parts and not so good parts. There's a lot of um, swearing at times, but cricket can be a long game. You might as well make it interesting for yourself. So I just basically entertain myself a lot of the time. So cricket, not just commentary. So you've got you've got a few accolades to your name. You put in a few hours on the cricket pitch with Kent, with the South East Stars, with the Northern Superchargers, but it all started in Tunbridge Wells, didn't it? So how did it get going? Because you were the only girl at the time, weren't you? Yeah, I was the only girl. Basically, my dad's from Yorkshire. I've got three older brothers. I'm the youngest of all of them. My whole brother, so I've got two halves and one whole. My brother is... I mean, I love him to bits. He's an absolute genius. But my word, he has no hand-eye coordination whatsoever. And I mean that in the nicest possible way, because I can never be as smart as he is. So I think the sporting 
side of things rested on me and I think I I just as soon as I could my dad I think was like here's a cricket bat here's a ball and we also lived next to cricket ground so really didn't stand a chance and I think I picked up and just like loved it so yeah I mean it's literally across the road from my house Thomas Wells cricket ground so when I was about eight or something I think went over and was a little bit apprehensive and then the next year I was like yeah let's go for it let's have a great time yeah so that's how I got into it really and growing up as you are one of four was it always competitive in the house or was it just like you say like you were the go-to girl for sports so my two oldest brothers they're half brothers so that they're a little bit older so they weren't actually in the house but just to give like an insight was over Christmas so they couldn't get or a couple of them can get competitive over sports but Oliver's my brother can't get competitive over sports so he really channels it in board games so there have been instances of crying over Monopoly where he would gang up on me because he didn't want me to win. I flip a board and cry and all that sort of stuff. So when there are things that we can get competitive about, like articulate, Cluedo, Trivial Pursuit, Monopoly, all those sorts of things, it gets very competitive. But when it comes to sport, I think me and my dad are the most competitive ones about that one. And also family arguments over Monopoly, that is Christmas. It's not Christmas without a Monopoly argument. Exactly, exactly. And yeah, I can't lose. Absolutely hate losing. And they hate losing too. So it's an absolute nightmare. It's fun, but a nightmare. (laughs) And obviously you you end up playing for Kent. You had a remarkable T20 debut. You opened the batting with Charlotte Edwards. And I think also in that game, you took four for 13 against Sussex. Like, I think those are also your career best figures in women's cricket. (laughs) Do you have a sense of pride? What was it like for you on your debut to open the batting with the legendary Charlotte Edwards and also take a whole heap of wickets? Well, firstly, it sounds like I peaked very early. Just smashed the first game and that was that. I mean, yeah, it probably is my best bowling, and best batting. But yeah, there's like there's a funny side to that story was that I wasn't expecting to open the batting or play or anything like that. I didn't really think of it. Obviously, wanted to play, but wasn't aware it was going to happen. So I'd got this bat where I think a couple of years before or a year before, Kent were playing next door at Tunbridge Wells and I got Charlotte to sign the bottom of the bat. I'm not sure if she knows this or she might know this. I have said this before somewhere. But yeah, my I broke my bat, so I taped up the bottom. Thank goodness I had, because I was walking out to bat <laughs> with Charlotte Edwards signature at the bottom of my back but it was taped up so no one could see so it was a little bit weird going out to bat um, with Charlotte Edwards I mean it was I think it was awesome but I was so young that it was one of those things that also kind of goes over your head and you only quite realize it in later life I was just there having a great time not really thinking about what was going on I was just playing a game of cricket so yeah I think later on I realized what's happened but at the time didn't have a clue I was just playing a game And you must feel a sense of pride playing for Kent. But not only that, Kent has produced some phenomenal England cricketers and cricketers in general over the years. Yourself, Lydia Greenway, Charlotte Edwards, Tash Farrant, Tammy Beaumont. You must feel a sense of pride that your county is producing these top quality players. I'm so, like, proud to play for Kent. It's a massive part of who I am, how I play and all those sorts of things. When I was growing up, I didn't necessarily know because I didn't start playing women's cricket or girls cricket till I was about 14, 15. So I wasn't really that aware of what the Kent side were like. And then as soon as I started getting into it, I was like, oh, wow, they're quite good. And then started watching them or they played a couple of games next door and saw them. I was like, oh, yeah, okay. And then when I was in the team and I realised who like who they were, and again, it was probably something similar as to looking back on it as something really cool to be able to play with those people and, yeah, just see how they go about them and, like, be friends with them on the pitch, off the pitch and all those sorts of things. So, yeah, Kent's a massive part of who I am, how I've played and, yeah, cricket for me. So it's not just Kent that you've played for. Obviously, in the Kia Super League, you were up north of the Northern Diamonds, and then you made a trip down to the South East Stars. And then the 100, you're back with the Northerners. Where would you say your heart actually lies, in the North or in the South? Mm. They've both got pros and cons. It's a lot more traffic in the South. People don't say hello as much. 
No, I love it's a complete cop out, but I absolutely love playing for the South East Stars and I love to play for the Northern Superchargers in the summer. Both teams have people that I love playing with, I love playing for. Both co- sets of coaches, again, I love playing with, playing for and learning from. Yeah, I enjoy being home and being down here where my family and friends are, where with the South East Stars, I feel like we're building towards something. Obviously, we won the Charlotte Edwards Trophy last year, but I feel like Again, cop out, it's just the start of something, but I feel like we're building more than just, say, winning that trophy and being one of the oldest members of the squad, which is horrendous to think. It's quite nice to be involved in that side of things and seeing how others do and having input in the younger end of the squad. But on the other side, it's great to go up north for a month or so in the 100 as well, get on really well with the players up there and absolutely they're a team that love playing for each other, love being on the pitch together. I mean, I got so many texts during the summer of saying, you guys just look like you're having the time of your life. And I was like, are we not meant to look like that? Of course we are. <laughs> We're on the pitch having a great time. Um, so, yeah, I think I enjoy the differences in the two and I love being at home with the South East Stars and I loved going away up north for the period of time as well. So, yeah, my heart lies both. And maybe with an answer like that, you've got a future career in politics. Exactly. No, no. I'm too much for people for that. I couldn't do it. Yeah, I know that one. So, yeah, you obviously you had to flit a bit between the different formats over the summer. And you say it was quite a family atmosphere playing with the Northern Superchargers. But at the same time, obviously, it was really getting down to business. What was it like having to change between the formats and basically learn a completely new one? just this summer yeah when we first played it no one had any idea what was going on which I think quite a lot of people after the matches when they're having interviews were saying that we're all in the same boat nobody had a had a clue what was going on by the end of it I loved bowling five ball overs because the sixth ball I didn't have to worry about the sixth ball it's fine I've only bowled five yeah you just kind of got used to it as you went along it's similar but slightly different but still just a game of cricket is basically just a more like ramped up version of T20. So yeah, I think once you've just, you basically just have to forget that it was different and just play cricket. Yeah. And I think as we went along, everyone found it a bit more comfortable. But yeah, at the start, nobody had a clue what was going on. And did you see this as quite a summer for the women's cricket as seeing everything change? The 100 did quite a lot for it. Yeah, I thought it was massive for the women in the summer. I think quite a lot of the comments I've had from people is that actually some of the women's games like a lot of the women's games were better not necessarily better but more interesting than the men's games because they were tighter yeah and the crowds were pretty decent for both games which I think was pretty epic yeah I think it was such a good platform and just how available it was I mean we constantly had streams up and people would know what was going on and yeah I think just how available it was I had people that had never watched cricket or one of my friends has no idea about cricket but all of her friends were messaging her being like I think your friend's on doing this and she's like oh is she oh cool that's cool (laughs) so yeah I mean I guess that that in a way is pretty cool yeah so it's just nice to hear that it's reaching not just the people that love cricket a little bit wider as well so yeah that's pretty cool and we've previously had your northern superchargers teammate Katie Levick on and she was talking about the experience of playing at Laws and how you how you all there was no judgment of you guys taking pictures and stuff like that what was it like for you to play at Lords? it's one of those days growing up I remember just being stood there going oh my like even when I was fielding there was a moment I just bowled and I think I stood on the boundary I think it was like how and I was just there and I was like yeah this is pretty epic. And yeah, there was no judgment. Everyone was super giddy. I think we just, yeah, as Lev said, we just let everyone be giddy. Just enjoy the moment. I remember Wolfie, so Laura Wolf, I was like, I can only wear train- white trainers because it's Lords. You can only wear white trainers at Lords. And I was like, going, you're ridiculous, but okay. But yeah, it's just one of those days that it's something that you look forward to the whole time growing up playing cricket because it's such like a big occasion. And then when you're there, it's just a little bit unreal at times. But yeah, it was pretty cool. I really enjoyed it. Especially the lunches. Have you heard about the food? Genuinely, that was about to be my follow up question. Mm. Did you get the lunches? Oh, my word. So as people pro- probably guess, I love food. It's a big highlight of my day. And like 
different grounds have different different food different is this levels. why you took up a no. sport that you stop and have a meal in the middle that's how i explain it to people is when they go oh what's cricket i'm like it's a sport where you play for a little little bit and then you eat and then you play for a little bit and then you eat and i like so we played a three-day game a couple of years ago and it was the best game ever because you play two hours eat two hours eat two hours eat I was like, this is sensational. But yes, so my life is governed by food and Lord's lunch is everything that everyone says. So yeah, it was great. Yes, I can confirm that the Lord's food is exquisite. What we live for. You mentioned Laura Bull's fart there about how she would only wear white trainers to training, but you also got to play with the wonderful Jemima Rodriguez. What was that like? Because I don't think the Indian players were selected for the 100 before the whole England India series so what was it like to play with someone of that caliber so we had Jemmy in the Yorkshire Diamonds a couple of years before and I think she got 100 in one of the T20 games which we probably shouldn't have won but yeah I think you could see then just how good she is and she's such a wonderful human as well on top of it You've got this wonderful human who loves the game and is so good and so elegant when she plays. It's just amazing. And in the first game against Welsh Fire, I was batting with her and I've never seen someone so in the zone. Like I was saying, oh, if the ball's there, I'm I'm just going to I'm just going to smash it. And she was like, no, you're staying with me. I was like, yes, Jamie, I'll do whatever you say. <laughs> Yes, boss, I can do this. <laughs> um, she was literally just telling me what to do. So all I had to do was just stay there and get her on strike. And I've, I've never seen someone so in the zone as her that day. And the shot she was playing was unreal, considering she's so small as well. It's just wonderful. She's a great human and a great cricketer. So, yeah, I'm a big fan. She also loves the North. She loves it. She loves it. I think she thinks she's actually a northerner at heart. She's, you know, her heart yeah. is properly Yorkshire. Yeah, she so she was so happy when she came back. She was like, Oh, I'm back with my family. And she she absolutely loves it. And um I think she said that she's got an aunt in Leeds as well. So she was having her aunt drop off. We had this one evening where we had the cricket on in the team room and she had brought in her mum's tea, so proper Indian tea and stuff like that. And we had some of the snacks as well. It was delicious, firstly, and the snacks were great. But yeah, I think she feels really at home up there and we basically just encourage her to be her. Whatever she wants to do, go do it. You you do you, honey. Because she is, as I said, a wonderful human as well on top of being a wonderful cricketer. So the happier you make her, the better she plays. <laughs> Does she that include be, be letting happy. her play the guitar? Oh, we encourage it completely and utterly. All for it. All for a sing song as well. The northern up north, they're not quite as well. So happy for a sing song. So yeah, fully encourage her playing her guitar as well. Can't sing. Well, we can't sing. She can sing. So according to Katie Levick, apparently she's buying a house up north. So she could end up being someone's neighbour at some point. Wait, Jemmy's buying a house up north? Well, that's what Katie Levick told us. Of course, Gaines Levitt would say that. Where she is, then she'll just become Lev's neighbour. Love's game, so I don't see the issue there. If she wants to buy up north, I fully encourage it. You do you. Big fan of it. prospect. I think it's a sensational prospect. No, but you can tell, just like listening to you, we can hear like the, the camaraderie you've got within the Northern Superchargers. So would you be hoping to be back in purple again next season? I was a little bit apprehensive about all of the purple kit. So when we're doing the media stuff, I kept on getting asked, oh, what do you like to think about the purple? And I was like, I'm not really sure if I like purple. But yeah, but warm to the purple, so I'm more than happy to be in purple again. Next year, I'd like a few more pop chips being put about if they're still sponsored for the Northern Superchargers because we didn't get any last year. So yeah, if they sort that side out, or that side out, I'd be happy as Larry. But aside from the purple, actual physical purple kit, I was... You know, I was saying, are you going to be back with the Northern Superchargers in purple? Well, so they're doing all of the... So I think at the moment they haven't actually started talking to people. So I've signed no contracts and made no deals at the moment. So I, li- I cannot comment. I'm sorry. You really are signing up for this politics life. I'm so good at avoiding things. I'm basically a bit really good waffler. You've been up north. You've been with the South East Stars. But you've also been over in Kiwi land. So tell us about your time playing over in New Zealand. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that one. I loved it over there. I forget where I played cricket. Are you sure about that? Because you, you've forgotten about it. <laughs> no. 
I forget. Uh, yeah. Well, it's been a couple of years. I haven't forgotten that I played cricket. I just forget in general life that I lived there for a few months. Yeah, I absolutely loved it. It was for down in Dunedin and one of the girls, Lee Casperick, welcomed me with open arms and helped me settle in quite easily. So yeah, they're just a bunch of lovely humans again down there. So I had a wonderful time getting stuck in. And when I got an opportunity, I'd go off on a little adventure. But yeah, I had a great time. And then I had a couple of the men's players, England um, men's players. So came over for the T20 smash over there. So ended up living in a flat with Ben Rain and Ben Cox for a month or so whilst they were there as well, which was also great as well. So yeah, had a, I had a great time. New Zealand's a great place. When you've got so much ice cream everywhere, it cannot be a bad place to play cricket. And the views are great and the people are wonderful. So, yeah, I absolutely loved out there. Did you go to Hobbiton? I did not have time to go there. I do plan on going back. I did like Milford Sound and Queensland and all that sort of stuff, but I did not have time to go up to Hobbiton. And don't, because I'm a big Lord of the Rings fan too. Obviously. I lived in Australia and I was like, I need to get to New Zealand just to go there. And I didn't. So now I'm like, I've got to go back. I need to go, you know? Back. I need to do... So I only managed to do... So we were done in um, Dunedin, done a So I managed to do a little, little bit around there and then go across to like Milford Sound and Queensland and all that sort of stuff. But I didn't manage to get up to the North Island or the north side of um, the South Island either. So I've got a lot more exploring to do that side of the world for sure. You know, because they're, they're letting us go so far at the moment, yeah. I mean, they're a little bit stringent in those sort of scheme of things. But in like 10 years' time, maybe... You never know. Maybe 20. Um, and did you find that your time playing over there had a really good impact on your game? Did you learn new things? Did you learn things off your new housemates while you were there? Yeah, it came out a really good time. So I basically was in the England squad and then was on the fringes. And it was just a really good time to go away and get some space and just go do things by myself and work things out for myself rather than being told what to do or all these sorts of things or have the pressures of people around or English or watching the squad go off and you're one of the however many training at Loughborough for a few days in the middle of the week so yeah I think it was very good for my soul to be going off to New Zealand at that time so yeah I think it was just good to go out there and just do life a little bit again as you said I'm not sure how much me and them the Ben's talked about cricket but they're good adventure buddies for a little bit but we'd like watch each other's games and stuff and then occasionally chat but it wasn't full-on cricket all the time so yeah that was a good balance that brings us nicely onto um so you went over to New Zealand following a bit of you know in and out with the England squad so you made your debut in 2018 and then that you were on a rookie contract after that and in the Covid training group in 2020 so it was quite up and down what was it like to join England but then fall out of favour again and what are the hopes on the international front from here? Yeah so when it initially happened I basically long story short I was in the England academy when I was way younger and I definitely wasn't ready I wasn't less ready to listen to what was being told or anything like that and then I went to uni and obviously uni is quite fun joined the hockey team joined the cricket team so obviously enjoyed the social side of life so dropped out of the England academy which I think was the best thing for me and ended up really not liking cricket hating cricket and went to Australia to play cricket which seems sensible when you don't like cricket so spent five months out there playing and just loved it again I was in Sydney I lived 200 meters from the beach with one of my school friends and god knows how many people in this house it was epic it was such it was so much fun so yeah and then off the back of that I played pretty well and ended up in the summer and then ended up getting back into England academy stuff so yeah I think Robbo just decided to have a couple of us training I think during the week, I was working as a PT at the time, during the week to come up to training and then kind of got a surprise little, he pulled me to the side at training one day. I was like, oh, so you're going to India? And I was like, oh, right, okay, cool. Oh, wow. So yeah, that was a bit of a surprise. I wasn't expecting it. I was, like, I've got a pretty express, like expressive face. So at the side of training, when he's telling you, I've got these nets, I'm there trying to play it cool and clearly in my head's going, oh my God. So yeah, that was pretty epic. So yeah, it, like it was brilliant. And then obviously you come back and then you're not in the plans. And that side of thing, as you can imagine, is like a bit rubbish. But you just kind of ride the waves and you keep going in the hope of something's going to change. Or yeah, I think again, I guess as Fran Wilson just alluded to, being on the fringe isn't the nicest place to be at times. Um, so yeah, it's a constant battle when you're on the fringe of things. And I'm quite a, a happy human. I like I've 
got a lot of energy. I like to bring a lot of energy, but sometimes that can be quite hard when you're not in the mix of things and can sometimes be a little bit demoralising when you know you're turning up and you're not necessarily going to get a look in. But yeah, I don't know what it is. Something inside you, something inside my head was just, you just keep going. You're just going to keep going for it. So yeah, I think the regional setup was very good for me and my head and everything that goes along with it and the balance of life and cricket life balance and being able to have that space to be who I am outside of cricket who I am in cricket without being pigeonholed into a certain player in the England setup so yeah I think the regional stuff came at the perfect time for me and you did make your debut for England in 2018 in India in the tri-series we spoke to Katie George the other day about her making her debut in India what was it like for you because obviously India is a very cricket loving nation and she did tell us the story of instead of chanting India India they changed it to ADR ADR so we want to get your thoughts on that Bryony Smith still does that sometimes. Yeah, so me, Bry and KG made our debut on the same day. I did nothing that day, so I had a great time. But the other two both... Did you get lunch, though? I did get lunch, thank God. Okay. (laughs) Thank God for food. As you were. (laughs) Yeah, as we were. (laughs) Yeah, I think for me it was just a great day. And having two other people doing it at the same time as you was really enjoyable so yeah did change it from India India to ADR but also goes really well with pizza 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 so (laughs) depends on (laughs) what you want if you want to go for ADR that works if you want to go for pizza that also works but yeah I think making a debut in such a cricketing mad place is I think it was one of my favorite experiences I absolutely loved going there and just walking around the streets and all that sort of stuff and going over and seeing them all playing cricket near to where a hotel was in Mumbai so yeah I absolutely loved it there I loved the experience who handed you your cap and can you remember what they said (laughs) I do remember who handed me my cap so Tammy Beaumont handed me my T20 cap definitely had a lip lip wobble because she decided to go all not too emotional but because obviously we played with each other for years at Kent so she had that she brought my family like talked about my family and all that sort of stuff so we were there I had a lip wobble she had a lip wobble <laughs> we're both there just like make it through but yeah it was so good to have um Tammy do that one and then I had Nat for the 50 over as well which is pretty cool because went to school with Nat so yeah that was good. When you were in India did you get to explore the country a little bit or immerse yourself in the culture at all and get to have that full tourist vibe or was it very focused on playing cricket? When we were in Mumbai we were encouraged to go out and about and uh, yeah you could do a little bit a little bit more exploring in Mumbai. You obviously had to go out in groups and all the usual shebang but yeah in Mumbai you could actually go and see what was going on a little bit more but we played the 50 over stuff in Nagpur where we were literally pretty much at the hotel or the cricket ground which I like to go exploring and just go off and walks and all that sort of stuff so that does my head in after a while but yeah so I really enjoyed the Mumbai side of things where you could actually go out and hopefully at some stage you'll be able to go back and explore more and see what it's got to offer. And so following that you were in you were on an England rookie contract after that which like you said is quite difficult being fringes and that kind of thing but then you were included in the the post-Covid training bubble in 2020 what was that like because it's you would I mean we're hoping that's a sort of once in a lifetime experience that none of us ever have to see again and do bubbles like that what was it like to be in that kind of bubble it's weird it was at a stage where everything was opening up outside and we were closing down so in that sense it was quite hard because you've got all of your friends and stuff being able to do things even though everyone's been in this um lockdown for however long and but yeah I think the derby so we had one at derby and then had one at Loughborough I almost found at derby at least you had the whole area whereas at Loughborough you could didn't walk anywhere so you were either at the hotel or at the cricket ground but you couldn't leave either or whereas at Derby at least you could leave the hotel and walk around the cricket ground and just seemed to be a bit in that sense easier at Derby than at Loughborough but yeah and also I think there was more games and stuff at the Derby one whereas there's a few less at Loughborough but yeah I think as with anything there were peaks and troughs you had good days you had bad days I don't think anyone particularly thought it was the best experience of their life but again it also wasn't the worst so again yeah peaks and troughs and just on that regional restructure in 2020 how did you find out that you were going to be a Southeast Stars player 
I had a message or call from Richard Bedbrook and yeah I think he had called me and Bryony relatively early on I can't remember when I think it was in a lockdown so it was all going in lockdown so me and Brian were being a fashion designers that we are and trying to choose a kit and all that sort of stuff so we're having samples sent to us and me <laughs> Brian Bedders trying to use all of our fa- I mean I'm going to speak for myself here. I'm not the most fashionable person in the world. So me being in charge of the kit colour is the best thing that's ever happened to this team, I think. So yeah, now I found out by Bedders giving me a call relatively early in the lockdown stage. So you found out because they wanted your fashion advice, yeah? Pretty much. I like. I am pretty much a style icon. I know I play cricket, but I'm a style icon first. That's why you're in the purple, yeah? It is. It is. Any colour I can pull off, I know. It's a it's a burden sometimes, but mostly it's a joy. And you know what? As a star, you don't even have to buy something to go on top of your Christmas tree this year because you are the literal star on the tree. I am the star on the tree. I'm just going to put my bobble. That's actually a good shout. I'm just going to put my bobble on top of the Christmas tree this year. Oh, love that. Yeah, that's a good Put your women's cricket chat bobble up there too. Yeah, good, good. That works. Keep the Christmas tree warm. I might need the stars one or your one to keep me warm. But yeah, one can go up the Christmas tree. That's it. Love that. I want to see your Christmas. I want to see your cricket themed Christmas tree now. Oh, I love the game, but do I love it that much? The stars are obviously coming off quite a, a positive end to the season, winning the inaugural Charlotte Edwards Cup. Is everyone still riding high on that and looking ahead to the defence and then taking the title off the Vipers in the fifty over Rachel Hayo Blint as well? I think, yeah, I think everyone had such a good time in that side of things um, in the summer. Yeah, I don't think we've mentioned it that much, I guess, as we move along towards the actual cricket, cricket side of things during pre-season, because most guys haven't done or literally just starting to ramp up the cricket side of things and cricket training. It's been a lot of games. There is a lot of games in the South East Stars training. So, yeah, I think, I mean, I'm definitely looking forward to going back at it um, next year and having another chance at the 2020 title but also hopefully we can I so we're very good at being brilliant and we're very good at being less brilliant in the 50 over stuff so hopefully we can be more brilliant than not next year because we're either epic or less epic so hopefully we'll be more epic next year (laughs) more consistently epic next year which I look forward to trying I wanted to ask what is it like to be coached by the legendary Johan Myberg, Somerset legend, won the 100 with the Invincibles, won the Charlotte Edwards Cup with you guys. So what is he like as a person? He is a wonderful human. He's a like a real solid good egg. He's I think he's been really important for me, but also some of like the other players over the last um, year or so, whether it's in cricket or just being able to talk to him he often just comes and just makes sure how things are outside cricket and all that sort of stuff so yeah he's good at cricket but he's also a real solid egg on the side as well so yeah he it's brilliant playing for him and playing with him and learning and all that sort of stuff and the conversations that we have are great and again I'm all for a person that brings in games and all that sort of stuff and loves card games and I remember in before the 2020 final, we had about 15, 14 of us outside playing one giant card game that he had started. So, yeah, he's very good for that side of things. And, yeah, he's just an all-round pretty decent egg. Firstly, I hear giant card game and I had this image of you playing with giant cards, which just which really... Funny, he's not big. <laughs> Irony is a wonderful thing. But you mentioned that he's there to talk to and someone that likes to have those conversations. Is that something that you think is really important? And how do you all deal with that at Stars? Have you got a designated person? Do you all talk to each other, bounce off each other? And yeah, what's that support system like? We had endless Zooms last year, which I think did everyone's nut in. But I think what came out of it was people have different ways of dealing with things so for me for instance I mean I can only really talk for myself is I'm a loud human I like to talk but I'll probably keep a lot of stuff like I like to be seen as that human that's where I'm most comfortable but yeah so within the stars I mean I'm better at just saying if I'm having a rubbish day so yesterday I was I was just saying I was like I've got this inner rage in me today I don't know what it is there's this inner rage and it's just simmering and I just get it out there and it's absolutely fine but yeah I think everyone tends to have the people that they talk to so I tend to rely heavily on Bry or 
Freya, Davies as well. So yeah, I, everyone's kind of got their people within the team that they can talk to. But I also know that I can talk to Bedders. So I literally called Bedders this morning to talk through something. I mean, it was cricket related, but I could talk to, call him, talk to him. I can always talk to Mibes. So if we've sorted stuff out, yeah, he's, for me personally, quite an easy one to talk to. But the, like everyone will have a coach that they will be able to talk to more about different sorts of things. And then, yeah, I think there's quite a good balance of that and style so people will have the people that they talk to and I think that's a really important thing within the team like you shouldn't expect everyone to be open with absolutely everyone I'm not going to tell my problems to absolutely everyone in the team but I'll make it known that like I've spoken to someone in the past for help just to get through like a certain stage and say people be like oh what have you been up to this morning it's like oh I just had like a session with the therapist or whatever like this and just mention it so casually that no one thinks twice about it like oh ajr does that as well so that's fine but she's always like this at training but she's it's like if i do that to help me be like that then it's fine by me like you do you so yeah i think we're relatively open at stars and i think that's hugely important across sport across life really you know to be open about that kind of thing and yeah we do see you as this fun bubbly person which you obviously are but everyone has stuff that they want to talk about so do you use your platform as this pro cricketer to be like you know what it's okay to talk I talk they talk and I can still shove 25 mini eggs in my mouth it's a talent it is a talent I was one I was thinking about that the other day I was like oh no they're gonna make me do something like bigger more than 25 mini eggs but yeah I think it is big I haven't personally used my platform that much but it, I tend to use it within the team so I'll happily say or so me and Capsy have this thing of because <laughs> Capsy smiles a little bit less than I do, but sometimes I'll just be in the summer. I'll be like, "This smile today isn't. I'm just putting a smile on." I was like, "Is your smile real? Or is your smile not real?" And some days she'll be like, "It's real." I'm like, "Oh, today's a good day. Let's go." Or she'll be like, oh, "It's not real. I'm just putting this on." I'm like, "That's fine. We'll, we'll get through this. It's, it's going to be fine." So yeah, I think I've haven't personally gone out of my way to make sure that everyone knows about what's going on but I'm happily within the team so but yeah I'm happy to talk about it with anyone and anyone who comes up to me or anything like that so yeah I think it's a really important part of life so if I can make it especially with the pressures coming into game with the hundred the bigger salaries is reaching more people and all that sort of stuff so if I can help the younger players a bit more then I'd say that is my job done and just on Capsy, when they announce that the next season there were going to be six contracted players per team and Capsi ended up being selected for one of the contracts what did it feel like for you and like you say you like to help guide the youngsters what advice do you feel like you can pass on to her so that she can be her best self not just in cricket but in life yeah I mean, I wasn't that surprised that Capsi got one of the contracts. She's qu- quite good at cricket, as I'm sure everyone's seen now. But I do like to bring it down, down to earth occasionally. Yeah, I think at some point she, there's some things that she's just got to learn for herself and work it out for herself. But I think it's knowing that we're there for when things go well, we're there for when things don't go so well. And yeah, some things she'll figure out on her own and some things she can come to us for but yeah I'm looking forward to seeing how that goes for sure it's exciting and you can also be like Capsy I actually went on women's cricket chat first and exactly exactly so I am the bigger Alice that is for sure we'll, we'll pin her down one day and be like so you're actually the second Southeast star Alice we've had you know no I don't mean to brag but I'm kind of a big deal I am my own star on my Christmas tree I- I am a star. The advent calendar did give me a star. Therefore, I am the star. Yeah, no, she... <laughs> I thoroughly enjoy having her around. So, yeah, no, it's annoying having two Alices, but it's something you got to deal with sometimes. Yeah, and is it nice to see that there's such a calibre of young players coming through? Yeah, I think not just, like, at the South East Stars. I mean, we've got some really exciting younger players coming through, for sure. But I think... Everywhere, I think it's really exciting all all across the um, the different regions. So yeah, no, it is really cool. Even if sometimes I'm like, "How old are you?" and I'm this old. Oh, it's awful. Absolute. I remember when I was one of the young ones, and I'm the old one. It's horrendous. You're not even that old. I know. I do act younger than most of them, but that's fine. Age is just a number. I constantly. Rich. Where's the fun in acting like an old person? I have a giant exactly. penguin sat right behind me and I'm 27. So 
judge for his own we're in a judge for his own you're absolutely fine but yeah I would say I'm probably act younger than most of the young players in the team and so other than Capsi across the country yeah. who have you got your eye on as the youngsters to watch out for next season I was playing for the Central Sparks last name Perrin Davina Davina Perrin yeah like I reckon she's very good at tennis because she plays shots like a tennis but she strikes ball really well and when we played against her I thought she looked pretty decent I mean that's a standout one in my head from the summer but yeah I think she could be great for sure the the future is bright the future is going to be sensational I'm excited to see it even if I am old and aged and with a sore back you can't talk sore backs we had Katie George on you haven't got like Stand on yeah, there. My back is nothing compared to mine is literally just sore from training. <laughs> <laughs> mine isn't case George sore. So you could see yourself as a bit of a role model, but what I love is that your hero growing up was Johnny Wilkinson. Where'd that one come from? I mean, he is a beautiful, beautiful man, and that drop kick will sit forever in our hearts. And all these youngsters won't remember that. So <laughs> ha ha, boo-hoo, sucks to be young. Why do you want to No, don't. Honestly, we'll put on music. And Capsie's gotten better, but there are some times when they have no idea what the song is. And I'm like, how do you not know what the song is? But it's all it's all the process. You just need to educate them. But yeah, no, Johnny was, slash potentially still is, um, my hero growing up. Obviously, the classic cricket one would have been Freddie Flintoff. But yeah, I just remember that drop goal and I remember everything about it. And I just remember after that being like, right, so where's Johnny playing and all this sort of, and just how good he was and how much time he spent on training and all that sort of stuff. I mean, it helped. He was obviously a good looking guy, but yeah, it was because of the drop goal and everything that came with it. That's why he was my sporting hero growing up, for sure. Well, we can't have you on the pod without talking about this. You mentioned earlier that your face likes to be a host to a range of expressions. What was it like to be the meme of the hundred this year? Yeah, I wasn't really expecting it, to be honest. <laughs> I got sent the GIF over WhatsApp and, I mean, I wasn't surprised. I, I know exactly what ball I'd bowled for that as well. Yeah, I mean, I wasn't expecting it so at all. build the picture like, for us. Yeah, OK. So I, I if it's a ball, I think it is. Danny Gibson's just come in, very strong leg side player, which point Lauren behind the stumps. Lauren Winfield Hill had just said, bowl a little bit wider. And they were chasing, the Lund Spirit were chasing, God knows what, off not that many. So it was a relatively tight game. So I went classic, back of the hand, dragged it a little bit wider, at which point she just stood there and just smashed me through the offside for four. At which point I just obviously gave that look of death. So yeah, and then apparently it got caught on camera. I'm not aware of any of like this going on I just got sent the meme and then decided to use it I mean I'm not that prevalent on social media but yeah that one blew up a little bit more than I expected it was exactly how I felt about not getting any pop chips to be fair but yes no that one did up more than I thought I just I'm just I'm not I am angry and disappointed next year we better have some I feel like maybe that's the entire cricket career of ADR that we need to talk about but we can't finish a podcast without our quick fire round. Go, so, go. as always, we will start with Hannah's favourite, which is what's your favourite sledge? My favourite sledge? I don't have one. I'm easily distracted. I just laugh. If people just, yeah, if people say anything, just laugh. So, I don't have a favourite sledge. I do like it, but I just wind people up. Hannah's other favourite one is what is your favourite tea item at a village cricket tea? Scone with jam and cream, obviously. In which order would you put the jam and the cream? Scone, cream, jam. Interesting. I like that you're very quick to go to something. I thought you were going to be like, oh, I like this, but I actually like that. No. I like the bowl of crisp and then the sausage roll and then you go back to savoury once you've gone to sweet. That's exactly how I do go about things. But I think a highlight would be the scone, jam and cream because I probably have don't have that that often and when it's there you're like oh yeah this is great favorite cricket ground you've ever played at oh, Headingley. Yeah. Oh, the headingley the oval ovingly oval the oval headingley either or ovingly win the hundred with the superchargers or win the hey ho flint with the stars oh don't do this to me rachel hey ho flint with the stars on a seasonal yeah. note favorite christmas food you know you've got all your trimmings out there what are you going for what are you going back for thirds of oh bread sauce interesting I with had pigs and blanket. blanket yeah and then dip it in heaven 
heaven oh uh, yeah no I could have a whole bowl of bread sauce myself and not even like worry about it mugs of gravy yeah you know? uh I used to do that when I pt sometimes when I was freezing in winter have a mug of gravy <laughs> <laughs> that's it that's how you become a professional cricketer drinking yeah it gravy. is that's how you finish your pt job and get into playing cricket it's really on fun. all the nutrition manuals these days is it is i recommended it to many clients actually and they did so well it was just because it was so cold and you have so many cups of tea and then i think one day there was only bisto left in the cupboard other gravies available obviously um so me and one of my friends decided to go for it and i was absolutely fine also your cricketing hero freddie flintoff can literally tell the difference between bisto gravy vegan gravy and shop bought gravy good role model to have you can't i reckon i'd be able to maybe i reckon i could too yeah. i don't think that's much of it i don't think you should be writing I, home about that i back i back myself the last tv series you binged it was actually so i'm in the middle of um schitt's creek and one that I'm just finished this Monday, I literally watched the whole thing on Monday, was White House Farm, where there were the murders in Essex. Yeah, and it, uh, it's got Stephen Graham as um, the head detective, and then I can't remember the dude, the main dude's name. But yeah, it was like a crime detective one. I mean, it was a true story. But yeah, I smashed that in a day. But they're the best because then you're not like, this is stupidly far-fetched because it actually happened. Exactly. And it was only six episodes, so it's like perfect for my attention span. A few episodes, dog walk. A few episodes, dog walk. Done. Last book you read. So basically, it was, but I'm in the middle of Eat, Pray, Love, but I got bored. And I read, the last one I read was this one called Name of the Wind. So it's basically like a mixture of Harry Potter and Lord of the Rings thing. Best mate in cricket. I will have to say Bryony Smith and Freya Davies. Who has the worst chat in the dressing room? Bryony Smith and Freya Davies. Actually, I reckon Tash Farron thinks she's got really good chats. She rates her chats. But you can also just take this out of her, so it's fine. So I'm going to link them all together. Tash Farron, Bryony Smith and Freya Davies. Who's got the worst fashion in the team? Me. I was going to say, if you don't say yourself, you do design the kit. Yeah, I will say I've got the worst fashion sense. Who is the worst dancer? Who is the worst from Southeast Stars? Yeah. I will say me. But but that's because I just go for it and I don't care how bad it looks. Whereas also, other people it's... keep themselves and go for the side steps. So they don't really express themselves. Whereas I will happily just go for it, even if it's rubbish. I so I'll happily, I will happily get the worst title. Favourite wicket you've ever taken? However many years ago, I bowled this absolute Jaffa to get Sarah Taylor out. Like, it was one of those that went away, nipped in and bowled her, and I don't know, I think it's the best ball I've ever bowled, so yeah, I'll, I'll take that one. Favourite musician or artist? I'm going to go with the Times at the moment, so Adele. Absolutely love her. What woman? I mean, I could go with something more interesting and pretend that I'm really cool, but Adele. We all know that your Spotify rap was like, Adele, Justin Bieber, something, and I'm totally... No, there's no... Bieber there, there was some like other stuff on it but Adele's a, I, I, my brother had um like pre-ordered the album so got the album sent to me so um I had to drive to Loughborough the other week so just had it on loop the whole time so yeah no I cried when I got tickets for her once that's the sort of Adele fan I am nice I went to a busted concert and I cried when it was over so same oh, kind of vibe. it's all right I went to Steps the other week or this weekend uh with Sophie Ellis Bexter epic so good Strictly Come Dancing or The X Factor? Strictly Come Dancing. Are you watching this season? No, not really that well. I dip in and dip out, but I haven't really, really been watching it this year, no. Bake Off? Oh, yes. Bake Off. Yeah. Were you happy with the winner? I mean, I love Giuseppe. I love them all. I mean, Chicks probably had the better day, but Giuseppe, oh, God. all. Uh, I was happy with all of them, to be fair. By the end of it, I was like, whoever wins, it'll be great. ADR. ADR. Thank you so much for coming on Women's Cricket Chat today. This has been great fun. We seem to have talked our way around the cuisines of the world. Maybe that's why you go touring. You can just try them all out and let us know. Your, you can rate next season. We'll get you to rate all the teas as you go around. Thank you so much for coming on Women's Cricket Chat today. And it's been amazing. And you're doing fab things. Alex, quickly, one of them socials. Yeah, so where can our listeners find you across social media platforms? Firstly, thank you for having me. It's been wonderful. Secondly, I mean, if you're really that interested, Twitter's, I think, AliceDR24. 
maybe I think but yeah if that's if you're that bothered and if you're not you're not so you do you you legend and to all our listeners look out for a picture of Alice's Christmas tree with either her sat on top being a star or a hat perched up there massive thank you to Alice for coming on and being a guest on the podcast her story is really interesting and we learned so much about her and that you know sometimes coming to cricket later on in life although 14 isn't that late but you know what I mean it shows that you can still have a profitable career and also how good are Kent at producing phenomenal England and county players and to all our listeners if you want to keep up to date with everything we're doing you can follow us on twitter at wcricketchat on instagram at women's cricket chat and if you want to give us a like on facebook we are women's cricket chat if you'd like to give our personal twitters a follow then it's at hannity1194 at georgie heath 27 at cassie coombs 98 and i'm at alex Van Pereira on twitter this has been women's cricket chat tune in next time Let's go!